Welcome to our lecture online. In this video, we're going to try to find the surface area of a sphere by taking a semicircle and rotating it about the x-axis. And we're going to use parametric equations because with parametric equations, it's actually a lot easier. So we have x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta, defining the circle. Now we're going to take half the circle, rotate about the x-axis. To do that, we're going to need a dx dt and a dy dt. So that's dx dt is a minus r sine theta, and dy dt is r times a cosine of theta. Now, the reason why we need that is to find the surface area of a rotated arc length, in this case a semicircle, that's equal to 2 pi y times ds. Of course, y is the distance from the x-axis to a point on the curve, and ds would be a small arc length along that curve. And of course, we can define the arc length ds by taking the square root of dx over dt squared plus dy over dt squared. And y is defined as r sine theta, so we replace y by r sine theta. So that's where we're going to start. So now we've moved the 2 pi r outside the integral sign, and let's see what we have left. So this becomes equal to 2 pi r, times integral from 0 to pi. The reason why we only go from 0 to pi is because we're rotating a semicircle, so the angle starts at 0, go all the way to 2 pi, and then we rotate that around. And uh, we multiply that times the sine of t times the square root of dx dt squared. Now that would be this quantity squared. So that would be minus r sine of t quantity squared plus dy dt and that would be r cosine of t squared. So r times the cosine of t quantity squared, and we still have our dt here. Notice when we square that, the negative sign disappears. We have an r squared and an r squared that can be factored out, and that would be the square root of r squared is r, so that comes over here. So this becomes 2 pi r squared, that comes from these two r's when they're squared, times the integral from 0 to pi of sine of t times the square root of sine squared of t plus the cosine squared of t, and then the whole thing times dt. And then, of course, you can see that this is equal to 1, so the square root of 1 is 1, so it becomes equal to 2 pi r times the integral from 0 to pi of the sine of t dt. So if you ever wondered why we need parametric equations, in this case, parametric equations makes everything a whole lot easier. The integral of the sine would be the negative cosine, so this becomes equal to 2 pi r times the negative cosine of t evaluated from 0 to pi. When we plug in pi, the cosine of pi is negative 1, but times the negative 1 makes that a positive 1, so this is equal to 2 pi r times a positive 1 minus, when we plug in the lower limit, the cosine of 0 is 1, but we have the negative there. Negative times negative makes a positive 1, so that's 2 times this, which is equal to 4 pi. And let's see here, I think I'm missing something. Because I have an r squared there, I forgot to square, I forgot to square, I forgot to square there, so it's 4 pi r squared. Of course, at the end I realize, since I'm looking for area, I need a square on top of the r, and of course I forgot to carry it through. But now that we've got the right answer, let's see here, that would be the surface area of a semicircle rotated about the x-axis, which of course would be the surface area of a sphere, and by now most of us know that it is indeed equal to 4 pi r squared. And that's how that's done.